Hello, Baylor Tramones. Um, we have to have masks with a flap for the mouthpiece, and then the cover would go over uh, our chops as, as soon as we're done playing, I presume. So I've manufactured a little uh, device made out of regular surgical masks. It involves um, three paper, not paper clips, but clothes pins, and then you have to have two masks. And I think it'll work for now, and then um, my recommendation is to buy, there's one called a blowhole. Um, it has a Velcro, I think, fastener on it. It might be a little bit, uh, I think, better overall, but for now, this will get us by. So I'll talk about this or how to make it real quick, and then we'll move on. Okay, here's the mask set up. You need two. And if, obviously, the blue side faces out. Make sure you understand where the little wire is. There's a wire that goes over your nose. Um, one of these masks you're going to destroy. Well, actually, both of them will. <laughs> You'll destroy. They'll not be usable only but for this purpose. And so far, first, take the mask that you'll be using, um, primarily that will go around your ears. And you need a pair of scissors. I'm just going to, you're going to fold it, uh, keep it flat. So if you've used it before, that's fine. Just make sure these folds are flat. And you're essentially going to cut a hole um, here's how I did this. I folded this in two, just like such, and you're going to grab this middle section. So if you see it's folded once, so underneath this first flap is where you want to cut, right? And so I kind of fold it this way, right, so that this is lined up with about an inch apart. So you don't go all the way down, not exactly in two, okay? And under this first flap, you're just going to take the scissors and place the scissors underneath that flap. You're going to be about um, two and a half inches. Just center the flap about where your chops would be, right? And just put a, sl a slit in here. Oops. Like such. And then I have to come up a little bit just so it'll cut. Right, yeah, right about there. Same thing on this side. It's a big enough spot there. Come over this slit underneath. You're going to cut this tag off. I maybe think it would work if you just cut about an inch above as such. Make it nice and clean. There you go. Here's your mask with an opening. Looks sharp. Set that aside. Take your next mask, the one that you're going to also destroy. And um, this will be for the flat portion. And so what we'll do is actually start, make sure that you know where the wire is, and then we're going to cut from the bottom side of the wire. The bottom side of the wire will be, there's no wire, actually, the bottom side of the, of the uh, mask. Um, and you'll just cut up quite simply up to the same place, kind of cut, move over about an inch and a half, two inches from the right side. And you're going to cut up as such, under that first flap, to where the crease is, yeah, as such, same thing over here, make sure you have enough space, if it's too small, then there'll be openings, you want full coverage, right, so you want there to be, in fact, it might even be better to make this, I think it's better to make this one a little bit larger, it's not, it doesn't matter if this is off-centered, you just want that flap to be obviously larger than the hole you just created in the uh, wearable mask. And there you go. Bring this up. Cut along the first that fold. Make it nice and pretty. It's all about detail, as you can see. Struggling. There we go. That looks terrible. So what I'm going to do is just clean this up. As such. Okay. There you go. Now. So you'll actually use it upside down, but it'll go right here. Get a couple of clothespins, not clothespins, I keep calling them clothespins, safety pins. And uh, very simply in on one side. These are about an inch long, these clothespins. You can get one large one, I suppose, if you'd like. But it um, seems to be better to get couple small ones for just so it'll be really secure. Same thing over here. I'd like the head of the pen to actually be facing each other just, you know, because it's 
important how this looks. <laughs> nice and symmetrical. You know, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to be accused of just slapping something together, right? Uh, and I, I'm, I'm making fun of this, but don't. This is not meant to be. This is serious. We want this to be um, uh, a workable solution so we can play. Now, I've taken this last clothespin and added it to the bottom of the flap you just created, primarily just for weight, so it stays down, right? And so I use the heavy, the, the, the head side of the pin on the inside. And you might find that you need a little bit more. Now this, this mask is obviously brand new, it's not been used. So once these creases are sort of worked out, right, boom, you wanna kinda straighten that. I think it'll work, right? And the important thing is when you actually wear the mask, this will not be down around your chin. You know, this needs to be, or underneath your chin rather, it needs to be kind of up just below your bottom lip. And that should work. I'll demonstrate. Ta-da. Voila. Um, again, we're only going to use this mask when we're playing. So I would keep it in your case, your gig bag, whatever it is, just very carefully tucked away in your backpack. Um, maybe in a headphone case or something just to protect it. Uh, we're not going to walk around school with this, obviously. But um, when we're playing in the tent, one, we'll need to have this. And so the only thing you really have to, to think about just when addressing the, uh, the trombone at this point is that the top lip is, is where it needs to be. The bottom lip kind of takes care of itself. So once I get my top lip there, I'm good to go. I think it's pretty fine. Um, I can breathe out um, pretty well. Remember, it, technique dictates that um, if we're breathing correctly, we're still maintaining contact with the mouthpiece, right? We're not taking the mouthpiece off the instrument. This is actually really a great little tool to make sure we're breathing fine. And so we're just capturing air from inside the mask, but through the corners of our chops with the mouthpiece still on the chop, right? So we're not taking the mouthpiece off. And it works actually quite well, okay? for in case this one gets lost through McCormick's. Um, I have the link up here in Canvas. You can take a look. They're kind of expensive for a piece of fabric and elastic on it. Um, it's the appropriate uh, denier. Um, for those of you that are curious, the reference in denier for ballistic cloth, backpacks, um, camping gear usually is about a thousand denier. Um, I think we need uh, 40 plus, this is, this is fine for that. Um, again, this is the seven inch from McCormick's. Here's what it looks like on the bell, a tenor bell. It fits actually very clean and perfectly. It's a nice tight feel. I've not played on it yet. So here we go. Mask on, hole in the right place. Here we go. Whew, making me nervous. definitely resistance right there's definitely uh, a little bit of uh, uh, sort of it's, it feels a little backed up on the attacks the low range is super stuffy the high range just sounds like it's not projecting like I need to blow harder because there's something over my bell um, but I think it's workable um, it, like I didn't like in the soft playing it's like I can't I can't modulate you know, where a, a nice crystalline attack is, it's like they all kind of sound the same. So my fear is if we use it a whole, just off the top of my head, if this is all we're doing, then maybe, you know, one day when we take them off, we'll all be just articulating through the bell and sound like, you know, very percussive. So we'll, we'll anyway. Okay, so here's the trade-off. We, we get fussy about this and don't want to use it. Um, 
right and then you get COVID, that's not, not really a trade-off. Um, so we have to sort of refine our playing a little bit and be able to switch gears. Probably not much different than spending a lot of time in a practice mute. Right, you're, you're not going to spend all day in the bell cover, just in a public setting. Even outside under tent one, we'll have a bell cover and our mask, of course. Um, so I think, I think it's, you know, if we all just decide not to use them, you don't like it, you can't play that way, that way with them, then we'll just be on Zoom and do everything online, which means you're dealing with, you know, latency and back and forth, and you're not playing with people, and you're kind of in your closet, and that's what you're going to define. If that's what you, and that is not a wrong choice. That's, I'm not saying that that's, um, you know, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, discredit that choice or somehow lean you one way or another. Just understand that that's the trade-off. Playing with a great sound, full command of your instrument by yourself all semester, or being able to toggle back and forth. And I think this is this is this is very uh, very doable. No, no, it's not it's not ideal, but it is what it but it is. And so, okay, hang in there, strength and honor.